What's up guys, today we are going to be talking about the key to success in chess. This is a single idea that will put you ahead of 95% of your current opponents, like for real. That is plus 300 rating points in no time, right after watching this video. And then you'll see now why it is so critical. Now let me share with you a common game between two amateur players, it's a blitz game and the rating of both sides are about 1800, so they're relatively advanced. Now it was wide to play. And of course we're not just talking about this particular position, but that's just a common scenario how usually chess games are played. Alright, 29 moves have been played so far, the game was back and forth with, you know, slight white advantage, slight black advantage, and now we reached a position where, okay, both sides are trying to attack each other's king on the opposite side of the board. So what should white do? White could actually win the game if they move this knight somewhere, for example, knight to h5, and it creates those threats of queen to g7, maybe queen of 6, but mainly queen to g7 checkmate, and black can't really stop it. So doing that would win the game for white. Instead, White decided to grab this pawn on g5 because he thought that it sets it up for queen to g8, which would be a beautiful checkmate in two. And it's all good, but you know, there is only one note here to be made. It hands a queen in one move. So Black captured the queen and it's game over. Now Black is winning. And you know what? It doesn't really matter how many tactical puzzles you solved, how many openings you know. Uh, how good are your like calculation skills? How many games of Magnus Carlsen have you watched? Like none of that matters as long as you keep making blunders like that. And on amateur level, like everyone is making blunders. And usually it's much more frequent than people think because a lot of blunders remain to be unnoticed by their opponents, right? So people blunder far more often than they realize. And that's a bottleneck. You can never improve unless you cure this little thing, or, you, or at least you make f start making fewer blunders, and then your chess results just skyrocket instantly, and in this video I'd love to give you a couple of tips to achieve just that. Here's an example that will give you hope for a brighter chess future, and it's gonna show that everyone blunders. This is a position in the game between uh, Vallejo against Santos, two of them are strong grandmasters, it was white to play. Just to be clear, white's pawn is moving this way, black's pawn is moving this way. Therefore, white's pawn is really close to be promoted, plus, uh, you know, the skin is in danger and overall white's winning. For example, if he goes king a6, it's hard for black to even stop rook h8 checkmate on the next move, so that's how white could win. Instead, white decided to finish the game in style, and he sacrificed the rook. The rook! Maybe he was the Gotham subscriber, who knows. And finally enough, black resigned. So white calculated the variation, king takes the rook, King takes here, discover check to the king, and then I promote the pawn, and that's a checkmate. So that's what white calculated. Black calculated the very same line and resigned. Now, it's all good, but of course, in the final position, black can just grab this bishop on e5, and the pawn is also stopped, and now black is winning. So it was actually white who should have resigned here in this position, and it just goes to show that everyone may blunder at times, but of course, our goal is just to make fewer blunders. All right, and now let's talk about some practical tips of what we can do to still win. Here's a position between two amateur players, it was white to play. Currently the position is balanced, approximately equal, white decided to reposition this knight to a better square and he played knight to f1, maybe he wanted to reroute it somewhere here. It makes sense generally speaking, the problem is after knight to b7, it turns out that white blundered. Now this queen is attacked and after it moves to any square, this knight on c6 will be left undefended and black just wins a knight for nothing on the next move. So now black is clearly winning. All right, so the first piece of advice here is do not resign mentally. What I noticed while talking to students is that very often, even if they don't actually resign, but they kind of give up on this game. They get upset that they kind of lost this knight in a good position and they keep playing on, but kind of mentally they already think that they lost this game. And it's not true, because again, on amateur level, everyone blunders and your opponent is blundering just as well in probably pretty much every game that he plays, which gives you hope that many more blunders are yet to be played in this game by both sides. <laughs> That's just the reality of the situation. And so keep playing on, keep creating threats. If you blundered, I mean, no problem, your opponent may blunder just as well. So here in this game I play queen h6, which is the right thing to do. When you blundered, you want to keep playing a little bit more aggressively, which increases the chances for your opponent to blunder something. Uh, black actually got concerned about this queen, even though white had no threats, and black played queen e8. Now white played knight e3, finally he rerouted this knight somewhere, black played queen e7, knight to d5, and after this exchange, black played rook to d8, which gave white a nice tactical shot. 
White played rook to d7 and now actually black resigned. Turns out that rook to d8 was not the right move. And the idea of white is that if we trade everything on d7, rook takes. Now queen can just move away because of queen to g7 checkmate, supported by the rook or queen takes h7. And if, we, if the queen takes over here, queen takes f8 also leads to a checkmate. So white didn't stop, white created threats and black eventually blundered. But that's not the end of the story. <laughs> Let's come back to the final position of this game where black resigned. Now, the interesting fact about this position is that black is actually still winning. <laughs> so, first of all, black is up material. So, even if he trades queen for a rook, I mean, he can still try to fight on. But even better for black is to trade it this way, queen f7, just to defend the queen. And then after rook takes f7, black could recapture, but even stronger is to take on d1 first, check to the king, king moves, now rook recaptures on f7, and now black is still up a knight, he has got three pieces versus a lonely queen, and black is completely winning. So not only black blundered, you know, a tactical shot by white, but he blundered that he's winning anyway. So like I said, many blunders are still waiting for you down the road in every game that you played, which gives you hope because your opponent is very likely to blunder. By the way, it could be that those moves such as rook to d7 or queen to f7 seem to be completely unintuitive and very hard to find. And don't worry, that's true for most players. Uh, if you feel that way, I've got a dedicated masterclass where I share with you exactly how I think while playing a game of chess, how grandmasters think, and it's a step-by-step -step algorithm. So if you got it, like you instantly improve your results. That's why the masterclass is called Improve Your Results Instantly, because that's how you do that. That's what I teach to my students, and they get great results. And again, it's simple and effective, so if you're curious, I'll drop a link below in the description. You may check the free masterclass, and lots of people said that it's better than lots of other things they studied about chess combined. All right, here's another game. We're playing black this time. So far, we have more or less standard beginning. And strangely enough, this move knight to c6 is actually turns out to be a big blunder because after knight to b5, there is no normal way for a black to defend this pawn on c7. White is going to capture it, attack your king, attack the rook, and it all looks very sad for black. So what do you do about that? Well, as I said before previously, the first step is just don't resign mentally. Don't think that it's all over, but try to find your chances. Now, if we need to somehow defend this pawn and we can't, black usually goes pawn to e5, trying to at least block this diagonal, then white grabs the pawn and attacks this knight. In most cases, black realizes that their knight is attacked, they move it away somewhere, and after that they still lose the game because white can continue attacking, for example, with a move pawn to e6, they can open up the diagonal once again and still execute their main threat and win. So what should you do instead, in a situation when you already blundered and found yourself in trouble? We gotta rely on an ancient wisdom. The best defense is a good offense. These are the moves that people often overlook. Ask yourself, how can I counterattack my opponent? That's a very unnatural way of thinking, but if you ask yourself that question, you will often find the way to do that. Because our natural reaction is when we are attacked, we want to defend. If a knight is attacked, we think how to retreat with a knight. But we don't think about counterattacks, and usually there are counterattacking moves available. For example, the knight can go to h5, and from here it's going to counterattack the bishop, which does not give white time to keep creating new threats. So that's one way, knight h5. What else can we do? Is there any other way to attack white? Well, there's a move pawn to a6, attacking this knight. It's actually a pretty good move. Finally, you can't even play pawn to g5 and counterattack this way, trying to deflect this bishop from active position. So we have even three counterattacking moves, and in most cases people will not notice any of them at all. So if you ask yourself this question, you see how much advanced you are compared to everyone else. And for example, the move pawn a6 actually gives might give black a good position. If white just continues taking, we eliminate this knight, and life's pretty good. We eliminated the main threat. If they take over here, yes, white is a pawn up, but our bishop is active, our rook is active, we have huge activity, and the computer even says that black is just better. Here's another position, it is black to play. You may think about this yourself for a second, just trying to figure out how would you play here if this is your position. In the game, black realized that this rook is attacked by the queen from f3, and therefore they gotta do something about that. Black decided to castle, kinda continuing their usual development, and it's all nice, but queen a8 was the game over. It's checkmate. Now, let's come back. So how do you prevent those things from happening? Those kind of annoying blunders that seem just like an unfortunate circumstance, but of course they could be eliminated. Now, it's just that before you play the move that you intend to play, ask yourself, can my opponent go to my half of the board and cause trouble? Make a check, capture a threat. 
can your opponent go to your half of the board and cause trouble? So for example, if you are a castle, can white go on black's half of the board and cause trouble? Now, we already know that there is queen a8 checkmate. All right, is there anything else? Well, we see that yes, there is also this pawn on f7, so white could also go this way and capture the pawn. Also nice. Or even better, white could capture this pawn with a knight, which would also fork both rooks, and that would also be winning. It turns out that casting was not just a single blunder, it was a dual blunder, so to say. So it blundered both queen to eight, a checkmate, as well as knight takes f7 with a fork to rooks. So that's how easily you could prevent this if you just ask yourself this question, because literally, these are only two moves on black's half of the board that possibly make sense for white. And these both moves are really strong, so you should avoid them. Meaning, in this position, castling does not work for black, and they should just defend this rook in any other way, move it away, play c6, the game goes on, black's fine. And here is a little chess challenge for you. In this position, it was black to move, black played knight takes f3, and white resigned. Now, black is threatening queen takes g1, with the support of this knight. And if white captures on f3, that's gonna be a checkmate on the next move. White calculated these lines and resigned. And your task is to find any solution for white. And if you can't do that, please write it down in the comments below so that you can train the thing we are talking about today. If you want to know and train the right way of thinking, which I mentioned previously, you may check out this free masterclass by clicking the link over there. And if you found these videos to be helpful, consider subscribing right here and supporting the channel so that I can create more good stuff for you. Have a great rest of the day. Take care.